Hey everyone, I'm doing a uh, Range Rover Classic restoration and also TDI swap out of a 1.9 Volkswagen. So I kind of wanted to bring you guys along the way and uh, show you the problems that I'm going to be running into and also um, little things that I learned along the way. So this is where I'm at on the actual carcass. Uh, I've installed new um, rocker uh, boxes. So these are actually just uh, 3 by 4 box tubing and uh, super strong, 1 8 thick. I don't think they'll be rusting out anytime soon. I made new uh, pillar like bases so I had to make those. Both uh, floor pans have completely been replaced. Basically, they, we, we could say the whole carcass honestly. Uh, not much is, is the original on this thing. So you see there the uh, body mounts are also made out of that 3, three by 4 box tubing. Uh, you see the rear tub there. So the uh, the whole tubs had to be replaced with the uh, uh, some uh, off of another Range Rover, and uh, they were probably just as bad, but it was already uh, easier to work uh, off of than the other ones. Have a better view on the inside here. So uh, everything's been primed with this uh, etching primer, but I'm not really happy with it. It seems to rust through, anyways. Uh, yeah, these end pieces were interesting because I did not use the original um, rear cross member so I had to make my own rear cross member out of uh, some steel I had laying around. It's actually like a steel off of a uh, big racking system. So some of you might be wondering uh, where the actual front of the truck is. So I, I actually had to cut it off because it was just so rotten out that I didn't think it was worth saving uh, besides maybe like the top section that's all kind of okay but uh, be, well, obviously I don't feel like rebuilding all of it but all of the fenders will have to be uh, kind of custom made and um, most likely the light boxes too if I can't salvage them off of another truck so we'll see <laughs> later on because I kind of wanted to keep it off too since it, it gives me so much space to uh, fab up my uh, engine mounts and figure out where everything is going to go. I won't have to be like uh, jumping into the actual engine bay to do anything. So it's going to really help me out. Uh, and then at the end we'll, we'll figure something out. So here's the frame. Uh, finally on the table so I can actually work on it. It's uh, pretty, pretty rusty. It didn't look that bad under the truck. But uh, now I'm starting to see that there's a lot of, uh, well, not that bad. But uh, this section right here is pretty uh, rusted through, so I'm going to have to bend a new piece and weld that on. And otherwise, uh, just kind of cleaning up. A couple holes have been patched already in the frame. So you can kind of see where that, that's been patched and another square I just grinded down right here. And um, so it uh, just needs to be sanded down and cleaned up so that I can actually paint it. So today the project has just been to clean up the frame and... Uh, kind of uh, get rid of all these uh, big uh, chunks of uh, molten steel left over from the uh, plaza cutting off the rock sliders. Cutting this out with the plaza cutter.
So this is what I was talking about with the plasma cutter. At uh, they really like to chop into pretty much anything you give it, accidentally. So I didn't want to go through this back plate here, but it just with the angle, it kind of like blows through it, anyways. And uh, anyway, so that's too bad. I'm gonna have to uh, fix that. So the uh, carcass is on a rotisserie now, so I managed to um, put like uh, something in the uh, hitch receiver and then also welded up a bar on the front of the frame so I could put it in the uh, pivot points. And um, so that kind of just uh, made it really easy to uh, grind the, the rest of the carcass down and uh, repair. I, I found another hole uh, in the back there, uh, two, two, two small holes. So. Um, fix those up. This is the finished result on the uh, cap that I had to bend up. So uh, it looks pretty pretty good. It's done with uh, way too thick of steel but uh, it's all I had so it'll do. It's better to have it thicker than thinner. And the other one was fine so no worries with that one. So that had to be patched. A little patch in the middle there and Another one back here, which we may not see too well. It's not really a big deal. So this is the final coat, the second coat of paint that I put on this frame and I think it's probably acceptable. I'm going to oil spray the whole inside of the frame. I'd like to get some thin stuff so it really seeps into all the cracks and the uh, all those little supports inside of the frame. So that's pretty much it for the, the rest restoration of the frame. Now the next step is going to be all the axles and all the suspension parts. Um, the springs, I uh, sandblasted the springs that uh, my friend 
Mike. I'm really glad that we put this frame on a rotisserie because it made it easier to paint all the little nooks and crannies. It's really difficult to get in all those little cracks and not forget any. I noticed that on the second coat I had missed all sorts of little parts. So thanks a lot for watching the whole video and uh, stick around for the rest of the series. I'm really excited to get this truck done and I'm going to be pushing hard to get some videos out. So, uh, stick around.